Hi, in this video we will talk about the neuroscience, the science behind stress. Because a lot of time when we are getting stressed, we would like to know what is the part of the brain that is causing that and what can I do to calm myself down. So if I know the why of the stress, why I am getting stressed, what part of my brain is working to create stress and why I have the same kind of stress in my life. Something bad happened 10 years ago but still some of these things triggers me. So that can help me to look you know there is a reason behind this stress. There is a reason, there is a part of the brain that is causing this. So that helps me manage my stress better because if I know which part of my brain is causing what that can help me relax myself uh, because at that time when I'm getting stressed out I can think oh this is part of my brain that is causing that so instead of reacting to it what can I do to calm myself down so let's talk about uh, uh, this um, this will be um, a video that will talk about the part of this stress uh, um, structure in the brain that is causing us to stress out. It will not uh, be a very detailed video about uh, what other part of the brain does. It will be more focused on the part of the brain that uh, causes stress. So our brain is designed to look for any threat in our environment. That's what our brain is. Um, we were designed to hunt and keep ourselves safe from the predatory animals. So our brain is designed to look for threats. Whenever we would feel threatened, we will do one of those three things. Either we will fight. Imagine having a lion in front of you, your brain will automatically tell you to run. If your brain thinks that there is an animal that you can feast on and it is in front of you, then you will stay and fight to capture that animal and eat it if you are being trained to you know hunt that animal flight another one what happens running away when your brain will perceive a threat like there's a lion in front of me i thought oh the lion is gonna eat me let's run the other is uh, freeze you stay still hoping that the tiger does not see you and your body is just not reacting it's not giving you that energy to run it just freeze so that's what the freeze response is our environment is different now uh, we don't see lions anymore in our environment which is a good thing uh, we don't need to fight any animal or look for our food we can order food online or go to a restaurant or cook at home life is different but our brain is designed to look for threats all the time. Brain has developed quite a bit, but as far as that stress response uh, is still there. Uh, these days the threat the brain perceives is different. So the threat mechanism is there, but now it's perceiving is different because it's not looking at the lions anymore. So now it's looking at few other things and it's telling us there is a threat. Brain perceives threats in situations like being in public. So when I'm in public, I'm not comfortable. I am thinking what people are looking at me. They think I'm weird. They think I'm not looking good or I'm smelling bad. So that's how my brain is perceiving things. Um, talking to a stranger, I feel anxious. My brain is telling me don't talk to them. They will make fun of you. They will not answer you. They will think you are weird. Or flying in the aircraft, I'm worried that if I fly in the aircraft, something bad will happen, it, it might crash, so I have the data. And if I look at the data, people who are driving in the car are at more danger to hurt themselves than people who are flying in the aircraft, but still I'm worried and my brain keeps telling me there is a threat. Going to a concert, I'm not comfortable with uh, too many people around me. Or doing a presentation because my mind feels, hey, you know, if you will do a presentation, Something bad will happen, you will screw up, you will say something pretty bad, people will laugh at you. Or if I am doing a presentation, one person is yawning and I say, oh, my presentation is boring. I'm moving to a new place. I don't like to take chances. My brain keeps telling me, you will not like it. This new place, don't take any chances. Just uh, 
stay where you are just try not to take any chances so so all these things what happens this is what brain is perceiving as threat anything different then mind is used to of it it's perceiving as threat so let's look into the science of stress we will discuss part of our brain that are involved in this stress cycle to give us a better understanding on how our brain and body operate under stress there is a thing called central nervous system central nervous system comprises of our brain and the spinal cord and we will talk about few part of the central nervous system one we will talk about the limbic system and one we will talk about the cortex so the limbic system this is part of the brain that does the emotional work of the brain we will talk about four structure of this limbic system one is thalamus t h a l a m u s it is a relay station or relay center it takes information from the outside world and then gives this information to the other part of the limbic system which is called amygdala a m y g d a l a amygdala is the key part of the brain in developing anxiety this is the early warning system in the brain once amygdala feels or perceive that there is a danger what it does it will communicate this to the hypothalamus to initiate a stress response so hypothalamus is the third part of the limbic system h y p o t h a l a m u s hypothalamus hypothalamus is the part of the brain that will initiate the stress response what it does it gets information from amygdala amygdala say oh, there is a danger do something so what um, hypothalamus does it initiate response to incoming stress by sending stress hormones to the pituitary gland which is a very tiny gland uh, in our brain to activate the autonomous nervous system autonomous nervous system is another um, part of the peripheral nervous system which we will talk about in detail later on in this video but just remember autonomic nervous system and one part of autonomic nervous system is sympathetic nervous system one is parasympathetic nervous system what sympathetic nervous system does it initiate that fight or flight response it initiate that increase uh, anxiety heart beating fast my blood pressure goes up i start sweating and uh, i start feeling very anxious and restless that's what sympathetic nervous system does parasympathetic does the opposite so to calm ourselves ourselves down we need the parasympathetic nervous system to activate what parasympathetic does it it relaxes me and how i can initiate parasympathetic nervous system is to have some deep breathing we'll talk more about it later so what does pituitary uh, is being involved pituitary um, in, uh, and then sympathetic nervous system is involved and then what happened because of that my breathing has gotten like this and start having sweating and i have fight or flight response my brain tells either run away or uh, is start having a panic attacks and that's what happens in uncomfortable situation the mind tells us oh there's a danger run away i leave the situation i'm in a meeting i'm not comfortable my sympathetic is elevated i start having problem with breath i think something bad is going to happen i might have a heart attack i leave the situation so the fourth part is of the limbic system is hippocampus and this is the part that is recording information and storing memories so what happens the amygdala tells the hippocampus to remember what is causing this stressful situation so the next time if something similar will happen the brain will be ready for it so brain is trying to do its part making sure that you know i am being taken care of but let's say i have an accident i had an accident and a red color car hit me so next time when i am on the street i saw a red color car the hippocampus that has stored that memory got activated and amygdala got activated uh, the hippocampus got activated and the um, the response of stress is start so that's where a lot of time we had something bad happen in the past it is stored in the hippocampus and hippocampus give the information 
to thalamus or to amygdala and the stress response start. So that is very, very important to keep this in mind that amygdala is the one that is initiating uh, or telling the other part of the limbic system there is stress, but hippocampus is the one that is remembering those things uh, in our brain. So we talked about the central nervous system, brain and spinal cord. In the central nervous system, we talked about uh, the limbic system comprised of the thalamus, amygdala, hypothalamus, and the hippocampus. The second part of the central nervous system is cortex. This is the part, you know, the prefrontal cortex that we will talk about. It's very complicated. Brain is very complicated, but we are just talking few parts of the brain and there are few of their functions. Prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain where all the information from our entire body comes. And that's where decisions are usually made about how to respond to certain situation. It also provides top-down regulation of thinking, emotions and behavior. This is the place where we process the event on a more logical way and then we develop a response. So if we are under stress, then it can display this processing system and what happens in acute stress when we are not able to manage the stress the amygdala take over and instead of prefrontal cortex managing this response in a more calmer way amygdala start activated and it does not let the prefrontal process uh, prefrontal cortex process the information Prefrontal cortex is also involved in inhibiting the inappropriate impulses, regulate attention and give us insight about our and other people action. So what happens if I am reacting too fast, so my amygdala is doing more function rather than my prefrontal cortex and that's where if we can calm ourselves down when we are under stress, we are telling amygdala please don't act out right now, let my prefrontal cortex think about it and um, then let the prefrontal cortex um, do that action. So that's what is very important in the stress response. So now we will move from the central nervous system to the peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system has nerve that goes out from the spinal cord and branches into autonomic nervous system and somatic nervous system. What somatic nervous system does, it helps with the movement of muscles and joints. We will not talk about that. We will talk briefly about the autonomic nervous system because that is part of the stress response also. Autonomic nervous system has three branches, sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system, and enteric nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system increases sweatiness, increases heart rate, increases the breathing. Parasympathetic does the opposite. It's a calming system that uses our vagus nerve to calm our heart rate and respiratory rate. To initiate the vagus nervous system, to initiate the parasympathetic nervous system, breathing, being in the moment, walking, talking to people, yawning, smiling, that initiate the parasympathetic nervous system and that helps us calm down. The third one is enteric nervous system which is uh, more involved in the digestive process so we will not talk about it. So in short, central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, they both are involved in stress but the main thing that is start is with your central nervous system. It start with your brain. It start with the limbic system. It start with the thalamus. Look at the information around you. Give it to the amygdala and amygdala feel hey there is a danger there is a danger i have to do something give that information to hypothalamus hypothalamus is start the stress response and then the hippocampus keep storage keep remember this thing and anytime that this thing happens in the future it will tell me that something is bad gonna happen it happened in the past so let's start that sympathetic nervous system what we need to do is next time when we are stressed out we can think about the part of the brain that is creating that stress response and remember that this stress response will pass on its own if instead of reacting instead of escaping the situation i'll just be in the moment 
I'll just do some deep breathing. I'll try not to dissociate, not to think about the past and be in the moment. And if still I am having a hard time doing it, I will initiate my parasympathetic nervous system more like uh, talking to a friend, start counting backward, start multiplying from like 5, um, multiply by 5, 10, 10 plus 5, 15, or multiply by addition, or uh, drink some water. Uh, if I'm standing, sitting down, if I'm sitting down, lying, that can help. Uh, yawning can help because you will never see anyone who is like <gasps> yawning and panicking because it's difficult to do it because panicking, sympathetic nervous system is active. <sighs> yawning, parasympathetic is active. Not easy to do it, uh, but it, it works. Or if you are stressed out, start like laughing. <laughs> Not easy to do it, but it will work because we are initiating the parasympathetic nervous system. But again, these anxiety attacks, the stress attacks are a mind that is too much active. And most of the time, there are no threat. So keep telling yourself, there are no threat. I will be fine. This is my brain giving information to my body and my body is reacting that way. There is no stress. There is no danger. I just need to just let it go or do some techniques, do some breathing, be in the moment and go on a walk, talk to someone, drink cold water, uh, laugh or do some yawning, or do something that helps me um, and it will pass. Thanks for watching.